Well, it is Thursday evening, the 27th day of October 2011, and we're not going to cover uh, real-life vampires here tonight because the globalist holiday of Halloween is coming up that we all celebrate and have no idea what it really means. No, we just happen to be covering this because it's in the news and it ties into the world depopulation program. You see, the global elite, the, the most powerful families ruling our world, dine on human flesh, have attendants that wipe their butts, bathe in blood, and are setting up a global parasitic economy and forced abortions and absolute evil. So you might as well call them vampires. But it turns out they themselves believe they're vampires. But 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 not the legendary vampire that shape shifts and flies around uh, as a bat or turns into a werewolf. No, people who are psychic vampires. And there's a report on this today out of the Daily Mail and a bunch of other newspapers, Blue Bloods, Prince Charles joins campaign to save Transylvania Forest because of his family connections to Count Dracula. Now, in my deep study of the British royalty, that's really German royalty, that's really Transylvanian and Hungarian royalty, I've done the research, you can do it yourself, uh, and, and, and he was only one of the most well-known 500 years ago of his line. Many of his other progeny later as the heads of Hungary and other areas, uh, Hungary, uh, engaged in bathing in blood, eating body parts, uh, torturing people to death. And this became the main line of royalty that ended up taking over Germania, the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, and England today. And there's another article. British royalty dined on human flesh, but don't worry, it was 300 years ago. And they claim that they don't have groom of the stool anymore that wipes their butt. But it turns out that's currently going on. And now President George W. Bush had a groom of the stool. That was actually in the news, that he had his own little toilet that traveled with him and uh, his own private royal butt wiper. Uh, so, so, so you can't make this up, uh, what goes on with these people. But uh, there it is. Look, he looks kind of like Vlad the Impaler. Uh, right over there, that little pervert. And you got this little, this little sicko right here. And again, it's only because good people are blind to these folks that are unable to deal with it. Prince Charles has come out publicly and said he's very upset that ancestral castles are being torn down to, for housing developments, that the Carpathian Mountain Forest, where he enjoys frolicking himself. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is a, a, a true psychic vampire. Prince Charles is campaigning to save forest of Transylvania inspired by his ancestral links to Vlad the Impaler, the 15th century nobleman, better known as uh, Dracula. And it, it just goes on to talk about uh, that, oh, he really is of the uh, line of the dragon, or Dracul. And, and, and again, I don't talk about sins of the fathers, but these are eugenicists that openly call for a 90% world population reduction, as his father and others do, Prince Philip, of the Dracul line. And uh, these are people who, who reportedly are still uh, drinking baby's blood and things like that. That's what witnesses say. But again, their ancestors were, as they report a few hundred years ago, but I'm, I'm sure they've stopped. Oh, but Jack the Ripper didn't stop. He was one of their people. Now, just so you know, they're sucking us dry. They're psychic vampires. This is real. That's what the New World Order is. It's run by these folks. Wake up to it. Realize it. Understand it. Face it. Because when you're blind to these people, they continue to win. Now, I want to be clear before the New York Times or Washington Post says, I believe in physical vampires. This is psychological, spiritual. The facts are the facts. We just presented it to you. This is going on. Now, let's shift gears to the fact that the eugenicist set up by British, German, Transylvanian, is what they really are, got to go through several layers of the onion to find the truth. And the word is the Transylvanians then trace back to even before that in antiquity in the Middle East. The issue here is the British royalty, which are Transylvanian royalty, the house of the dragon, Dracul, the house of Dracul uh, went to scientists 140 years ago, 150 years ago or so, Galton and others, uh, and said, what do we do? We like, we like what... Galton's talking about, we like what Darwin's talking about, we really like what happened 100 years before, 
uh, with Malthus, Sir Malthus, who said, release biological weapons, release smallpox on the poor, wipe them out. We believe there's too many people. When there was 500 million people in the world, they thought there were too many people. Uh, because they don't like you running around and getting in their way. They want just enough people to be their slaves and feed off of, but not too many, because if you get too numerous, you might actually deal with the parasites, which is a mosquito, a blood drinker, a tapeworm that gets in your stomach and sucks your sustenance. Vampires, parasites, control freaks, enemies now being identified. Info warriors, you are the 21st century Van Helsings. So we're going to deal with these people. We're going to expose them. We're going to deal with them. Ha 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 I see you. I see you and you're scared and you should be. Because you know those of us that are red blooded are more powerful than those of you that are blue blooded. By the way, you look at this little headline. Everything in the world is stated for those that see it, all in gang sign. Give me a document cam shot on this. Blue Bloods. Prince Charles joins campaign to save Transylvanian forests because of his family connections to Count Dracula. You know, I was like 10 years old. My dad's a voracious reader and reads history books. And he had mainline university history books on the history of vampirism and how it started in Transylvania and Hungary and other areas and, and how it was rampant and how they were then German royalty, British royalty, now the British continued it. So it was already news I knew um, about the British, you know, eating human body parts just a few hundred years ago that we just showed you. But notice right here, blue bloods, blue bloods. You want to see blue blood? Can you see the blue? See that blue right there? You know why you see blue right there? That's a vein. You see... A vein has used unoxygenated blood or dead blood. Why did the ancients, this goes back thousands of years, call elites blue bloods? It was their way of saying their blood isn't red. Their blood isn't full of oxygen and alive. These are blue bloods. What does all this mean? The sooner you get to the meaning, the sooner you know that you're dreaming. <laughs> But the most important thing is we see you blue bloods and we got red blood and you don't like us because you know we're stronger than you. You try to teach us we're weak, but we're going to defeat you and humanity's going to the stars and you psychic vampires are going straight to hell. You will be defeated. And that's why when I later tonight show you the footage of a little child's jaw blown off and the horror of it, you should look at it and watch it and know that that's a feast of these psychic vampires and that's who we're fighting. And as men, we shouldn't worry about any form of torture or pain or death in the mission to defeat these scumbags. We're reclaiming our humanity. We're reclaiming our humanity and our manhood today. We do not fear you. We're going to rout you out. Because we're not afraid of the high noon sun. It's what makes us strong. We're red-blooded. You who hide in darkness will fail and will fall. And the beginning of your end has already begun. And you know it. You know it. And again, I'm on this whole vampire jab because I've always known it's parasitic. But when I was in Las Vegas for three days at government instant, outside of government installations covering news that's going to come out on Jesse Ventura's show. I really w realized this is a death cult psychic vampire system we're facing who claims to their acolytes in the lower level they're building up humanity. But when you truly study at the higher levels of eugenics, it's to destroy humanity. This is the fundamental enemy of progress, the fundamental enemy of survival, the fundamental enemy of plenty. I am here for wealth and strength and honor and beauty and everything good. And these people are ugliness. So they tell you they're guardians of beauty when they actually wage war against what you see on that screen right there. They are anathema. They do not like that because it threatens them while they're hiding out. Now, speaking of this trash, the Royal Commission on Population 1949 came out and said, we're not going to let the third world develop. We're going to deindustrialize the Western world. We're going to create a neo-feudalistic state. And now the UN's saying from 7 billion to 500 million people, the sick population control agenda. This is all over the news. AP, BBC, they're promoting 
If there's too many people, reduce it to 500 million. We got a report on the Georgia Guidestones uh, coming up. And, and what are Guidestones? It's a symbol of this is generational. We're going to continue this work as long as the hills are there, as old as the hills. And we're going to get to the Guidestone report in a moment, in a moment. So let's kill that for a moment. No, it's great. I want to, the guys have overdone it. They've got so many damn graphics and clips. I don't know what I'm doing there. It looks like you guys have seen the enemy and you want to crush them. And welcome to the club. Wild horses couldn't drag you away from this. Look at this report right here. This is what got me on this jag this morning when I read this. It's up at Infowars.com. It's the American dream. And I know each of these quotes. I didn't, when I saw this stuff 15 years ago or so, I didn't just believe it. I sent off for the books. I sent off for Margaret Sanger's papers. I went to the U University of Texas stacks and dug this out. So, so this is real. Here's the report. From 7 million people to 500 million, the sick population control agenda of the global elite. And in this report from the American Dream up at Infowars.com, they have, for example, the first new Ten Commandments of the infamous Georgia Guidestones states the following. Maintain humanity at 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. That's over a 90% reduction from 7 billion. Uh, CNN founder Ted Turner would go even further. A total population of 250 to 300 million people, a 95% decline from present levels would be ideal. But he had five kids and the biggest landowner in the world and you know, has 18 jet aircraft and dozens of mansions. But old ladies should have their gas turned off because this, this son of a bitch wants all their, wants their capital. He's a vampire. He wants what they've got. Not because he wants to be fatter himself, he wants to shrivel them up. He likes to watch it. Dave Foreman, the co-founder of Earth First, says that reducing the population to 100 million is one of the three main goals. My three main goals, as a trendy chicken neck, I added that part, would be to reduce human population to about 100 million worldwide, destroy the industrial infrastructure and sea wilderness with its full complement of species returning throughout the world. But they never complain about GMO and the globalist playing God. They want to tax you for carbon dioxide plants breathe. All part of the trendiness. Uh, continuing here, University of Texas at Austin, Eric Bianca, the head of the biology department says, I do not bear any ill will towards people. However, I am convinced that the world, including all humanity, would clearly be much better off without so many of us. He wanted to say he wants to come, you know, the deadly virus is coming to kill everybody. Mikhail Gorbachev thinks that reducing population by 90% would be just about right. We must speak more clearly about sexuality, contraception, about abortion, about values, about control of population, because the ecological crisis, in short, is the population crisis. Cut the population by 90% and there aren't enough people left to do a great deal of economic, ecological damage. It's just... It's, this is, an, this is Malthus 250 years ago. They, they never stopped their crap. The Greek elites, the type that killed the philosophers, thought that a couple hundred thousand Greeks were too many and were saying, kill everybody. They're crushing the breast of the earth. It's just to control freaks who like to kill people, and it's an excuse. Well, good. You all line up first. All you uh, wannabe vampire trash, we'll, uh, we'll oblige you. You want to die? Do it. Spill your blue blood all over the ground. Get out of our way. We're going to Alpha Centauri's. Get out of my way. Get out of my way, control freaks who are threatened by humanity. You are demonic trash and you will be routed. You will be and you know it. You have failed measurably. Our people won't rise till you really start hurting them. And I know that's coming. But look how much they've already woken up from what you've done. I see you. I see you right now. Don't you worry. Continuing. With all the CNN demonizing the population, calling for, calling for sterilization. Here's another one. All environmental and economic and social problems are easier to solve with fewer people and ultimately impossible with even more. That's the London Guardian. Here's another one. A planetary law such as China's, but we got this graphic. A planetary law such as China's one child policy is the only way to reverse the disastrous global birth rate currently, which is one million births every four days. And it goes through uh, all of those reports. That, that's out of the Epoch Times. Pregnant women lacking birth permits are hunted down like criminals by population planning police in China and forcibly aborted. But the communist Chinese leadership like, Ted, like, uh, like uh, 
Ted Turner, they're allowed to have five, six children. Again, the vampires are allowed to breed, but not us. They want enough to feed, enough to use, enough to torture. But it's scary to see so many slaves. What if they woke up? What would they do? Again, pregnant women lacking birth permits are hunted down like criminals by population planning police or bombed by drones, loving liberal, loving little children, faces blown off, loving liberal, sacrament by the Peace Prize winner. Oh, it's so liberal. Ah. Uh, and, and they're forcibly aborted. And it's just page after page of page after page of quote. I mean, I'm just skipping dozens of them, all bibliographed, all linked official sites. And how we're a cancer, and don't worry, they're going to give us cancer to stop our cancer. The world today has 6.8 million people. That's heading up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job, the new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we can lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. Oh, we even have the video clip of that. He says vaccines will be used to sterilize you. His dad was the former head of Planned Parenthood. That's why he's an NSA front man. Here's Jacques Cousteau. You can find this video clip online. In order to stabilize world population, we must eliminate 350,000 people per day. Well, how about, Jacques, you're dead. How about your son blows his head off then? Like, honor his father. Oh, oh, I need to die so you can eat out my substance. I got it, Dracula. I got it. How about the opposite happens? Hmm? Like Tony Montana says when that vampire sitting there about to blow up the kids in the car. And Tony Montana says, you think I need this in my life? You think I want this? You think I kill a kid? You die. Boom. You die. How about that? You like to sit there and kill people all day? How about you die? You die. You die. You want us to die? How about you die? But that's just a movie. We're all for peace here. We're going to identify you and break the trance of you mind control bastards. You think I'm sick like you? You think I kill kids? You die. That's what this is all about. You. You prove it. You start going out. You start slitting your own throats. You do it. Like John Lennon said, you population control freaks are full of crap. You're just a bunch of murdering control freaks, and I will defeat you. All right. All right. The quotes just go on and on. Oh, give me a Prince Philip quote from the father of the current Prince of Dracula. In the event that I am reincarnated, I would like to return as a deadly virus in order to contribute something to resolve overpopulation. Prince Philip of the family of Dracul. The house of Dracul. Okay, let's get to the Georgia Guidestones piece, and then we're going to go into the full news transmission. By the way, we're live at 740 Central. Maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Isn't that just special? The Georgia Guidestones is a large granite monument in Elbert County, Georgia, USA. A message comprising 10 guides is inscribed on the structure in eight modern languages. The word is Ted Turner paid for it. A short message is inscribed at the top of the structure in four ancient languages, Babylonian, Classical Greek, Sanskrit, and Egyptian hieroglyphs. The structure is sometimes referred to as American Stonehenge. The monument is almost 20 feet tall and the buried support stones are included. And it just goes into all of what they call for how they are going to deal with the human cancer. And these are the people injecting lovingly your cancer into your vaccines. These are the people giving you mass death, deindustrialization, total control, and their lustful hatred of you and your family, and their vampiric disgust like a cat playing with the mouse. It's torturing before it disembowels it while it's alive. But we're not mice, we're men, we're lions. And we will rout these little greedy, spindly headed devils that are the new world order. We are exposing the, these, these, these pieces of filth. And all over in all these languages is how humanity is a cancer, how they're going to deal with us, how they're going to kill us. And 
all the people come and visit now. Years ago, people didn't come and visit. It just sat there as a globalist totem on a key ley line that the occultists believe was bringing in power. Now, thousands a day bring their dogs to urinate on it. They urinate, they desecrate it, they attack it, and that's good. Now, their secret psychic totem built off the side of the highway that no one visited is desecrated daily with, with the love of humanity. Yes, <laughs> you have been identified, enemies of the republic, enemies of humanity. We know who you are, we see you. Oh, we know we're exposing cancer as being in the vaccines is viral. So now they have a new vaccine that protects you from cancer, but actually gives you the cancer. Yes, they say humans are a cancer on humanity. No, the vampiric control freak, psychic parasite trash is the enemy. And the globalists consider themselves as humanity that will live in harmony with the Dracul Earth, but the rest of us must die while they block industrial development that would actually lower population. So uh, there you have it, uh, that report. We are ruled by psychic vampires, by enemies, by ultra-wealthy trash and uh, who are anti-free market, and they are enemies of free humanity and must be defeated. And it is a sacred honor, it is a sacred oath, it is a sacred pleasure to face all of their economic, psychological, political, psychic, spiritual attacks. It is in the crucible of the fire that we are risen to the next level. And it is a distinct pleasure to face this filth. Because before I get to the next news, I want to draw a portrait. I want to draw a portrait. I, I was about 11 years old listening, not to poetic heavy metal, some of which is actually anti-Luciferian, but some nasty, nasty music. And my father walked outside and um, I was a uh, watercolor painting on the porch listening. And he said, you want to see the devil? And I can't draw it as well as he did. And he said, I'm going to show you the devil. And it was basically, basically this little, uh, you know, chicken neck creature, all weak and pathetic, just toddling uh, like a ghoul. And you know what that is? That is the devil. The devil is a cancer. Its only power is to destroy. And this spirit of succubus evil only thrives when the strong don't recognize it. If you want to know what God is and creation is, before, we, before I go to the next news, pull me up a Hubble Space Telescope photos. Let's pull up Hubble Space Telescope photos, stars forming, and then I'll show you. Do you want dead bodies, children with their lower mandibles blown off uh, by Al-Qaeda fighters brought in by the U.S. and NATO? I mean, is this what you're into? A bunch of destruction and pain and no creation and life is eternity. That's what everything's about. Not, not this. Yeah. You want to see God here? Here, here. Cut over here. You want, you want to see God? That's what we're talking about. Not, not some chicken neck devil. If I am destroyed or you're destroyed in the process or your neighbors laugh at you, you lose your job, so what? You're dead already. It, it, what counts is in this universe, in this time, that we choose for eternity what side we're on. Even if you're not a Christian or don't believe in God, what your energy force stood for. I mean, I'm someone who's attained power. I've attained somewhat notoriety. It means nothing. It's, it's a weight. But the gift of helping an old lady across the street, the gift of unlocking a mind, the gift of planting a garden, the gift of creativity. Look at these photos. Just pull up the whole screen as we stare in this window of the universe. I mean, we have no idea our potential. You know, my greatest dream is that my progeny, which could be black, white, Hispanic, old, young, humanity, my greatest dream is that my future progeny, which means any human that survives into the future, that we become a type one civilization. That means survive without the earth. That, that this species can survive even if our solar system was destroyed by a supernova by our, by our sun. 
My, my greatest dream is that I be a minor footnote in the data transfer understanding of the advanced creatures that humanity is going to develop into, and that they, just in a small footnote, look at the work I did and use that as an example of what they need to do and the challenges that they face in their realm. And uh, it, is not, it is not vain. It is the love of humanity, the love of creation, the love. That's what people write on old cave walls because they wanted their ancestors to know, I love you. I had thoughts. I have information I want to transfer forward to you. This is the ultimate goal of humanity is, is builders, creators, planters, seeders of worlds. We have only begun to imagine our potential. The eye has not seen, the ear has not heard, the mind has not imagined the gifts that this species will achieve if we can defeat the parasitic dracul control freaks, the failed humans that rule this earth through the strong's own reluctance to take power and truly become what we are. Let's say the Earth's overpopulated. Export the people to space, willingly. Release the advanced secret technologies. Stop hiding the true potential of humanity. Don't bring us back to a dark age. Bring us into something undescribable. You know what, I have all this news about the people in this temporal world Waking up, gun ownership soars to 18-year high. 47% of Americans admit owning guns. Yeah, another 30 or 40% are smart enough not to say they do. Uh, we've got those reports right there. And again, it's not that we even love the weapons. It's that it's a symbol that I'm not your slave. Uh, we have that report. I love raising my daughters not to be weak. Most women are trained just to just be killed. No, have weapons, defend yourself. And Kurt Nemo has an article about support for Second Amendment at record high. But uh, we also have a Mike Adams article where he actually broke down their numbers. It was showing that vaccines were like 15% useful. And now he actually broke down the numbers, the real numbers. It's actually 1.5 out of 100 adults are helped. But when you take a flu vaccine, it lowers your immunity, uh, just in the Canadian study last year, by double. Uh, and so... Again, they don't come with guns at us, they come with these shots. And the useful idiots administering them have no idea what they're doing. So, out of 100 people getting the flu shot, 1.5 are helped. But then you realize that it destroys your immunity, has all this other stuff added to it, so it's, it, it it's actually increases your chance of getting the flu when you add that data over it. All right, we did this special report because I was in here taping the news, as we do some nights, and ran out of time. And so I went ahead and just did a large portion of the news live here this evening, about 30 minutes of it. So uh, we're going to go to break and go right into the intro and go to what I taped earlier. I want to warn you, this is one of the most hardcore transmissions we've ever put out. But I want you to get this information and carry this football forward against the globals. We've got big censorship news coming. The uh, globalists realize we can see them and they're getting really worried. Uh, that's all coming up this evening. But that's it for the live transmission. And my great dedicated crew, wonderful job to you. But the real news is now coming up. But this has been our eugenics uh, primer here. Understand why the globalists are so ruthless. They are the worst of the worst in human history that are in control. They are the most ruthless, the most destructive. And they are certainly not going to be holy starship captains. I mean, you, you can certainly know that. I make that joke because we have a liner we play where it's like two different songs. One of them has Starship, one of them has Holy in the, in the name, and it, the computer spliced them itself and combined the names to Holy Starship. I kind of I kinda think that's a cool name. Uh, let's go ahead, and uh, it's, like, it's like the, in closing, the Highwaymen, that, you know, that song where it's Willie Nelson says, I was a highwayman along the coach roads I did roam. Sword and pistol by my side. Many a young maid lost her baubles to my trade. Many a soldier shed his lifeblood on my blade. In the next part, Chris Christopherson, I was a sailor. You know, I sailed around the Gulf of Mexico. I went up to unfurl the mainsail. It broke off in a storm. I was killed. And then it was cut to the building of the uh, you know, dam in Colorado, and he slipped and fell, and he's entombed in that. And then, and then it cuts to the future. 
I fly a starship across the universe divide. And when I reach the other side, I may become just a single drop of rain, but I will remain. I'll be back again and again and again to face the darkness. It is our job in history, all of you that are here today, because the universe chose you to face evil. Now here is the main transmission. Stay with us.